This is how you wake your neighbors up. You just start a smoke fire and send it on over and say, hey, it's time to get up. Yep, they're up. It's been a long time. Not a bad rig, huh? <laughs> so we we're about to leave the winery and this gentleman pulls in in this bus and he's a, a tour bus operator. So he drives bands around and um, he, all over the place. And so he said that he's been driving uh, for bands for festivals, things like that. I didn't recognize any of the band names, but that doesn't mean anything because I'm sure if he's, they're driving around in a tour bus, they're doing pretty well. Um, but it was fun. It was fun to meet him and, and the bus looks really cool and I'm not gonna ask to go inside because he dropped people at the winery and their stuff is in there and I don't wanna be showing their stuff without their permission. So, um, that's what it looks like. And he has a can koozie collection on the front dash because he said people will get off the bus and they'll forget a can koozie and he said, just grab one, bring it back when you're done. We're gonna give him a border hookups can koozie. There you go. We took off and Jacqueline uh, couldn't find her phone in the truck and we thought, man, did it fall out when she jumped in the driver's seat and then back out? And uh, she said, I bet I left it in the trailer. And... Got it. All right. Yep. I knew I had probably put it down when I went back in the camper. Thankfully, it was there. So don't want to lose that. That's pricey. Hop on in there, pumpkin. I'm in. Little peanut. Hey everybody, today on the Border Hookups, I will be reviewing the High Boy P6 Fat Tire Electric Bike. Full disclosure, I have never owned an e-bike and I have definitely never reviewed an e-bike until today, that is. When High Boy gave us the opportunity to give an honest review, we jumped at that said opportunity. So what's my first impression? Well, unlike uh, much lighter mountain bikes that I'm used to riding, the P6 comes in at 65 pounds. The bike arrived 85% assembled and it took about 30 minutes uh, to complete the rest. I would suggest that you use two people since the weight of the bike can make it a bit of a challenge. After the first assembly process, if I had to do it again, I could have probably done it in half of that time. Don't make the same mistake that I did by putting the handlebars on backwards. Ah, rookies. The packaging was solid and all of the components arrived in perfect condition. One thing that I love about the P6 out of the gate are the simple lines and graphics. The black matte finish along with the white lettered uh, logo really pops. One of my favorite features uh, are the bright headlight and the horn. And it comes in really handy when you're uh, kicking across the desert at night. And 
the horn comes in handy to let people know you're coming. It's a little loud, so be careful that you don't surprise people. The control display, plenty bright. Uh, you'll want to make sure you angle it precisely for the maximum visibility, especially in the daytime. Uh, I did ride the bike at night and the display was almost too bright. Angling it away might help with this. The control panel has multiple features, including an LCD backlit screen, power level, battery level, speed, odometer, tripometer, voltage meter, timer. In addition to the large shipping box, there's a smaller box that holds the keys, assembly tools, pedals, user manual, and charger. I would suggest using a larger tool kit uh, since the tools that come with the bike uh, can be a little small for larger hands and a little bit cumbersome. I absolutely love the uh, 26 by 4 inch fat tires which are great on loose dirt and bumps. The tires actually act as shock absorbers which is really really cool. In the past we have had trouble with our skinnier tires on our mountain bikes uh, out in the desert sand whereas these fat tires solve that problem completely by floating over the top of the dirt and the sand which is amazing. Another feature that I love is a twist throttle, especially because I come from the world of motorcycles. The twist throttle allows you to keep your hand completely closed on the grip as opposed to a thumb throttle lever on other bikes. So here are some specs. First of all, there are three riding modes. One, bike, which is just pedaling. Two, power assisted pedaling. And three, pure electricity, meaning you just twist the throttle and go. The battery is a 48 volt, 13 amp hour removable waterproof battery with an indicator light to show the charge level. There are nine speeds that will give you options for pedaling and pedaling assist. And the drivetrain is a Shimano Altus unit. Again, the P6 comes in at 65 pounds with a max load of 265 pounds. An important number to keep in mind is the standover height, which is 28.3 inches. Now, if you're a shorter person, that's gonna be an issue because once you get off the seat, that bar is gonna be a little bit high for you to build a standover. So make sure that you uh, know what your inseam is on your measurements. The suspension has adjustable front shocks and are very easy to manipulate. There is no rear suspension. Keep in mind that the fat tires really do help in softening the bumps though. The brakes are dual mechanical. This brakes both front and back. The P6 is listed as a class three bike, meaning that it is equipped with a speedometer and only assists until the bike reaches 28 miles per hour. This was new to me. I just learned it myself. The motor is a Bafang 750 watt high speed brushless motor with plenty, plenty of power for this 225 pound rider. Oh, did I mention the comfortable padded seat? All right, so we turn on the controller, and I've been riding this bike for probably about a week and a half now, just trying to get it all sorted out before I hand off the information to you guys. Um, so what you do is you click through the modes. Zero is just pedal. Um, this bike is, you know, 65 pounds, so it, it weighs a little bit. Um, so if you're not on assist, you feel it, but it's a good workout too at the same time. If I ran out of power out on a ride, I wouldn't be too frightened about riding it back. It wouldn't be like I was a, a paperweight out there. So um, we're gonna take off. And as I said before, it has an odometer, it has a speedometer, uh, it has a, a tripometer, and it tells you how full the battery is right there, which is really nice. So let's do this. Engage is right away. Um, not going very fast, obviously, because I'm pedaling 
really, uh, really quickly. But on the other side of the shifter to go down is the shifter to go up. So now I'm taking off and even in speed one, it'd be a workout, but it works really well. So now I'm gonna go up to two. Yeah, can feel it pick up big time. Actually, it's pretty big, pretty big jump. And then three, and really taking off. Four, five. Yeah, so then I have to shift up more. Actually, I went the wrong way. There we go. No, I did go the right way. <laughs> if I'm not careful, I'm gonna run into the fence. So as I take off, it's immediate. It's like a turbo, it's tons of power. Sorry for the jerky ride here. I'm out at the fairgrounds riding in the center area of the horse track. Because I didn't want to be out on the roads because the roads are pretty tight here, pretty small. Now, if I just want to do throttle, I'll, I'll show you how, how fast it takes off with just throttle. So this is no pedaling. It's pretty good. I ran out of room, so, you know, it, it, it's a good kick. And again, I had said in the video that I had never ridden an e-bike, or never owned an e-bike, rather. I'd ridden an e-bike a couple of times. But when you're riding somebody else's e-bike, you're a little bit more careful because you don't want to crash. But now that I have my own e-bike, um, I don't worry about it as much, so I'm willing to kind of uh, push the limits a little bit and this thing gets up and goes Really fast like even just touching the pedals the pedal Immediately it takes off so there's no lag time um, One nice thing about an e-bike is that when you get on the bike and if you're in an area where you just need You kind of need to get going just to get your speed up to start pedaling um, this will do it you just give it a little throttle twist and I'm kind of repeating myself a little bit, but one nice thing is that you have your um, brakes disengage the motor. So if the brakes are on, that doesn't work. One thing to be careful with is if you're not um, on it and ready to go and you're showing somebody how it works, don't twist the throttle without the brake on because it will take off. And um, you don't want to do that because that would be a bad day for everyone involved. So yeah, this is um, a great bike. One thing is that when you're turning, I rode it up to the store this morning, and uh, when you're turning with these fat tires, if you're not used to them, especially if you're going a little bit faster, they feel very spongy. Well, that's the whole idea, is there, there are 20 pounds of, of pressure in them. It's not like a, a race bike or a, a, you know our other mountain bike where we had you know 50 pounds of pressure, whatever it was, where they, the, the tires were rock solid hard. Um, when you turn on this one, it, they do get a little, a little spongy, but it's not bad. I mean, especially on the dirt. The dirt feels very different than, than being on, on asphalt or concrete. With this, the dirt just kind of makes it feel natural. It just feels like that's the way it's supposed to be. Here's another thing I was gonna point out. In some of the reviews I watch, because I like to review the reviews, because I want to know what, what are people talking about? What do they, what do people really want to see? And they had listed that there is a um, little squeaky brakes. That's okay though. Um, there you go. Uh, that they had listed um, that there's a power charger for a USB for your phone on, on this controller. I went out and looked for it, looked for it, looked for it, couldn't find it. I reached back out to High Boy. And these guys are great. They get right back to me uh, answering questions. Um, and they said, no, there's no uh, power charger on there, which is kind of a bummer because it would have been nice to have it on there to be able to charge, like put your phone here and be able to have that charging off the battery as you go down the road. But oh well, it's not a deal breaker for me. I can put it in my pocket and call it a day. One thing that I don't like about it is there's no place for water bottles um, to screw on cages for water bottles. So basically you either have to put on the hip belt with water bottles in there, which is fine, or put a rack on the back. Or In my case, I wear my backpack a lot, so that's not a, a big deal for me. Um, but it would have been nice, you know? It's gotta have a water bottle. I really, really like this thing and I'm looking forward to riding it more in the future to take it more off-road over some hills and 
But right now, we're just trying it out on the racetrack. And that's the High Boy P6 Fat Tire Bike. I love it, love it, love it. So before Dave and I quit jobs and sold our house and everything to come out and live in the camping world and full-time RV, I had to get up every morning at the same time and I had to commute to a job. And I was there, you know, nine hours. I had to commute back and then I was on call the rest of the time. So 24 seven. So now we really take our time in the mornings and I love that. We've said in other videos that we don't like to get up early in the morning and we don't, but this is kind of when all the beauty happens. One of the beautiful sounds uh, of being up early in the morning and it's chilly is the sound of our diesel heater. This little guy right here. Warm, warm air in the RV. We work for ourselves. Our businesses are flexible and remote, obviously. And it's just awesome because we get to just do this. Just sit and have our coffee. Dave's making tea over there. And then we usually just sit and talk. And that is my favorite part of the day, is the morning. And I used to hate mornings. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> Yeah, just making some tea and gonna hang out. Monday mornings are our, our meetings, and this is where we talk about what we're gonna do for the next week, next month, next year, mm -hmm. and uh, figure out the plan. So we can bring content to you fine folks. <laughs> All great dreams and goals start right here in the morning. <laughs> so I sit over here because our rig is 29 feet, nine inches, so under 30 feet. And we like to be able to see one another and be relaxing at the same time. So I sit in the back of our dinette and Dave sits over on the couch. Just in case you don't know what a couch looks like, that looks like a couch. Yeah, and we just love it. We love being able to just take our time in the morning. Unless, of course, we're moving and traveling, which we are doing tomorrow. But we've been here at this spot for how long, hon? We've been here for eight days. Leaving tomorrow, we don't want to leave. So we will have to get up and kind of be quick on our feet tomorrow. But for today, Hey everybody, welcome to another RV Life Tip of the Week with Dave. I am Dave and it is chilly out here and that's why I'm wearing a coat and a hat. So this week I am talking about taking care of situations like flat tires on the side of the road. One thing that I have learned is I keep a list on my AnyList app that tells me where my tire wrench is, where the pump is, where my toe straps are, where my lever is for my RV so I can drop my tire if I have to change the tire because you wanna have all of that ready to go before you have to start unloading your backseat of your truck or the bed of your truck, searching around for all of these things on the side of the freeway. So make sure you keep a list of, as to where all of this uh, equipment is and you should be good to go. And that's been another RV Life Tip of the Week with Dave and make sure you check out the 25% off for RV Life Pro. <laughs> my dad, my Eagle Scout dad would be so proud. They started the fire. This is the ugliest looking fire. But we don't have a lot of wood here. It's a lot of deadfall. So we're having a campfire tonight, so I don't want to use the good wood. So I'm just using the scraps from uh, from the, what I found in the woods. Ton of deadfall up here. Tons, tons. You'll see people come out with trailer loads of uh, wood, and it's all the stuff off the ground that they've been cutting up. Which is kind of good because, if I'm not mistaken, that's what starts a lot of the fires, is the stuff on the ground, um, is the tinder. See, <laughs> now I'm getting woken up. So there you go. Here's my ugly campfire. But it sure is nice to have a campfire in the morning. I love it. Why are you sitting way over there? Why do you think? Smoke? I'm breathing in nice, fresh air. Rookies. Thank <laughs> you.
This would be a good time to have an electric chainsaw. This would be nice to have an electric. We have a gas chainsaw that we leave in Minnesota, but to have a gas uh, electric would be great. Just throw it in the back of the truck and be able to cut wood like this. But we're not generally in areas where there's a lot of trees. And in the desert, like even our hammock that we have hung up, in the desert there's nothing to tie it to. So this is a treat for us. This is like coming to the Grand Canyon is one of our favorite spots because if trees, you can have fires. You don't have to go buy the wood. <laughs> kind of nice. Some of our fellow travelers invited us over for a chili dinner. So we're gonna head over there and we don't have to cook. Let me rephrase that. So Jacqueline doesn't have to cook. She does all the cooking because she's so good at it. And it's so tasty. I can't turn that down. But over yonder, they're having chili. So we're not gonna cook tonight. Jacqueline's not gonna cook tonight. So we're gonna head on over there. How's the chili? Awesome. awesome. Yeah? That's yeah. it? You're not going to say anything else for the camera? The viewers want to know. Oh, How's the chili? Great! Oh, there we go. I, I shouldn't have to yet. ask. Oh, what? I haven't had any yet, but I'm sure it's great because yeah. Boyd made it. Yeah, Boyd made it. It's Is he good. eating it? Yeah. I want to see him take a bite before I sit down. <laughs> All right, I'll eat now. Well. Never eat perfect. before the cook eats. Welcome to another healthy living tip with Jacqueline. Today's tip is that you can have dessert and it doesn't have to spike your blood sugar and it doesn't have to have a ton of calories. So I made this for Dave's birthday and I absolutely love this dessert. I have a few ingredients here that I'm using. One of them is partly skimmed ricotta cheese, organic cocoa powder. I have slivered almonds, some stevia monk fruit sweetener, and lastly, I have some vanilla extract. So it's really simple. There's no baking involved at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my measuring cup and I'm gonna show you while I add the ingredients just how quick and easy it is. I need a half of a cup of ricotta cheese. So let's get that in there. All right, I'd say that's a half a cup right there. One quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. There we go. One teaspoon of the cocoa powder. All right. Half of the stevia monk fruit packet. Ooh, got it all over. Whisk it around together until it all blends together. Now I need a little container to put it in. I need a little ramekin, one of those ramekins. I don't have one. What I do have is this little baking dish. I'm not gonna bake it but I'm gonna use this. So I'm gonna put that mixture in the little dish, cover it with some slivered almonds, and refrigerate it for one hour. Just adding a little bit there. I'm gonna put it in the fridge for one hour, and then it'll be ready to eat. There you go. And here's another client transformation. That's been a healthy living tip with Jacqueline. Well, it's not so quiet now. I have the generator running because behind us is a big tree and it doesn't let the solar get down into our solar panels. So every day I have to run the generator. It's a pretty quiet generator. I mean, Compared to a lot of them, this one's pretty quiet. I know it doesn't sound like it right now. And I'm also filling water. Um, I had a little bit left over 
in the um, bladder, our water bladder. Here, I'll show you. And I wasn't going to fill the truck or the, the the rig because we're leaving tomorrow. But if you've heard me say before, my rule of thumb is fill when you can fill, dump when you can dump, all that stuff. Fill when you can fill, dump when you can dump. Because you never know uh, where you're going to run short of water or you're going to get sidetracked. So I figured that at least if I fill the rest of my fresh tank, tomorrow is a pretty rough road out, so I'll probably actually uh, let some out before we leave. Because tomorrow we head to a uh, regional park for reset for two days. Get some work done, do some laundry, and then, uh, then I don't have to have all the water with me. So I don't like to travel that heavy, but I like to travel a little bit in case, again, we uh, get sidetracked and don't go according to plan. I carry these, and tomorrow when we fill, I'll fill a couple of these uh, at the way at the station. I probably could have filled these out of the bladder, but oh, there goes my generator. It ran out of gas. So anyway, I was wondering if it needed gas a couple minutes ago. Here, witness to uh, my inside of the head thoughts. There you go. Anyway, that's what I'm doing today. What you doing? Hi, just cleaning off the uh, slide. So we're staying in a wooded area. We're not used to having to do this because usually we're out in the desert and we don't get leaves and twigs, but here where it's wooded, it's full of leaves and twigs. So I had to come up with my broom and uh, sweep it off. No problem at all. And we have heard about slide toppers, but we know a lot of people that have them and they say they're kind of a nuisance because when it gets windy, they rattle and they have to bring their slides completely in. We would not be able to get around in our rig if we had our slide in. So, we do this. She loves to be on the roof. It's her favorite spot. She goes up there and reads her books sometimes. She doesn't. Yeah, that's good trajectory. Great. Bye. Au revoir. <laughs> I don't want to leave. We're leaving our friends. We're leaving this beautiful spot and it's nice and cool here. And we're going to, I don't know, 80 some degrees. That won't be bad. And it's a nice place we're going to, but I love it here. Absolutely love it. Good job. Thank you. Good job to you. Thanks. Hello, 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 everybody. Thanks for watching another episode of the Border Hookups. And please remember to ding that bell so that we can let all of you know us too. And we, Jacqueline and I, have more episodes coming out. If you like what you saw in the video, give us a thumbs up and maybe comment below so we know what you're thinking. Consider becoming a member if you want access to a few perks. Right? Right. Are you on your tippy toes? I am. <laughs> My wife I, just grew two inches. I feel too short. And You're then not too short. My head gets cut off and I feel like I have this just giant like head and that's it. So, but my calves are getting really sore right now. Well, let's keep talking. <laughs> we hope to see you out here. See y'all out here. It says right here, you can lose your balance. Imagine that. I don't believe him. I don't believe <laughs> oh god, I'm turning the camera off right now. Oh, this is just this quality comedy right here. You can't buy this stuff in Vegas. Why you're up there, you want to rag in some Windex, Dave? Do the windows? Boy, it's not so funny anymore. <laughs> Alright, I'm done.